Thank you for tuning in to the Rave Esports Show with me, your host, Bubba Gaddert. I am super honored to start Season 2. We were at Infocom this summer, and we got to visit a lot of really, really amazing stuff. Now, today we're doing a facility tour at Boise State. We've got some content from Doc and some stuff I shot when I was there for an event called the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. That's the CECC. That's organized by Collegiate Sports Manager Group and Esports U. And there was a West Regional happening there last year in 2023 to help college teams from the west side of the United States make it to the CECC in Arlington at the Esports Stadium. CECC also went there this year in 2024, back in May, and next year in 2025, they will also be going to the Esports Stadium in Arlington. And I tell you, if you haven't checked out that stadium and you're an AV nerd like the rest of us, you've got to see what it takes to really put on a show with audio and visual needs for esports. Now for today's show, we're going to be looking at Boise State University. That's Chris Haskell, or as we all call him, Doc. We've got an interview with him from Infocom, as well as one of his players, Dirtho, who plays for the Boise State Esports Rocket League team, probably one of the top players in the world. And then we got some video shot by vMix that was done by the blogger, Tim Vadenberg. So let's check it out. All right, I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Doc Haskell from Boise State. Now I, I didn't know you were as big of an AV nerd until I talked to you last night. Well, you talked to me for about 10 minutes about all this nerdery stuff that you thought I knew about, but I'm not as right. smart as you. But tell me, what's going on here at the Esports 2.0 booth? So, there, I mean, there's, so there's a ton of stuff. So uh, the tech uh, is like magic. I mean, we all see the, the trick and we know how it's done. What really inspires us is when we see something and we know the normal way the trick is done, but we're like, hey, they're not using that, or how did they, I thought it was, and so so this event is like, for AV nerds, uh, the coolest thing, because everybody's trying to impress each other. Everybody's coming up with a new way to do a, an old idea, um, and everybody wants to learn what technique they use, see if they can figure out the trick. So at your facility at Boise State, you've got an amazing setup, just, I got to see some stuff you did, uh, last week with Seaval, was it right? Seaval, which is College Valorant. And you had some amazing, nice sliding cameras, which I know you really want to get some more of I those. Some sliders. But can you get a, do a little bit of translation, uh, translating, a little bit of translating for people in the AV space who are trying to understand esports, trying to understand esports arenas that are different from what they're used to with facility spaces or churches yep. or whatever. Kind of, kind of translate a little bit on how you in the college space and others that we work with across the country, maybe they need arenas trying to be as nice as yours, but how do these people in the AV space understand esports and how they can get involved to help get facilities built? So for real, uh, esports is sports. So all of the vernacular of storytelling for sports broadcasting is true of esports broadcasting. The primary difference is that the players are easier to find because they sit in the same spot and the cameras are in the game. And once you understand that it's the, but it's the same, it's the same storytelling, it's the same relationship between storyteller and player. Um, and that all you need to do is use what you know um, and basically identify where people are going to be and you mix those stories together. The visual vocabulary is con continues to expand, but it never gets that far away from what's happening on a Sunday football broadcast. Or if it's a if it's a clip show or a story show, it never gets very far away from, you know, uh, let's go back, I, you know, the Larry King show, right? It's just a, a three camera shoot in a small studio. The, that vocabulary is still true in esports. It's still about the players playing the game that they play. All right, I'm here with an amazing star, student athlete from Boise State. Dirtho, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. So you just competed on stage here at Infocom at the Esports 2.0 Live. And I, I want you to talk a little bit about why you're so sweaty. Oh, uh, I think just as the competitive nature in me, all my teammates are all competitive. Um, we're competitive within each other, to be honest. And there's always tension between us. Who's doing better? Who's doing better in the rank ladder, the top 100 leaderboard? So I think that's why I'm so competitive because I have great teammates around me who always push me to be the best. Now tell me about what you want to accomplish in the next few years playing at Boise State with Rocket League. And, and do you know your ranking, first of all? like, like. You're like SSL yeah. something. Tell, 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 the, tell people what that is 
ranking wise and what you want to do with that ranking while you're at Boise State? Yeah, I'm at Boise State because honestly, not only is it a great program esports wise, but it's a great school academically as well. Um, when it comes to esports, all my teammates are all top 100 players in the world. Um, we all grind the game not only collegially, but we play professionally as well. So we're always playing in like pro scrims, six mans, and stuff like that. So, you know, we're hoping to just grow in both aspects in the collegiate esports scene and the professional scene as well. So, last question you're here at Infocom. This is a big AV conference convention where lots of really cool high tech stuff that we're hearing could be the future of stuff you hear about and see in 10 years you saw today. Have you looked around yet? Have you seen anything cool? What stood out to you so far? What stood out to me is uh, how many smart people there are. I'm not going to lie. And just coming here to play video games, it's, it's pretty interesting because I'm um, trying to make connections with all these people. And that's the biggest thing. So this is the Boise State uh, Esports Control Room. This is a dedicated esports broadcasting control room. We do about 30 hours a week with our student staff and uh, and casters right now we've got uh, some of our broadcasters out on desk but everything flows from live cameras we have very little ndi in this space most of it is is wired directly into this uh, constellation atem constellation uh 4me uh, which you see displayed on a number of these monitors. Don't let it fool you. TVs are only about 170 bucks a piece. You can make a control room look fabulous with just a handful of TVs. But uh, it flows into our primary broadcast computer right here, which is where most of the work is done. There's an eight uh, port Blackmagic uh, card in there, which is taking eight inputs directly from the Constellation. Uh, our technical director right here has about 140 inputs uh, that uh, they manage uh, from this space and uh, is able to bring in uh, the different uh, observer PCs. We have two in this room and we can bring in several others from outside if we need more in-game uh, cameras. But uh, the direct relationship with uh, this person and this person is Z Zach is our replay director and he is producing replays during the event on a separate installation of vMix that serves as the replay machine. And they just, uh, they just did three short three second clips which require manual uh, process to, uh, to create. All of our sound uh, comes into this relatively simple Look L12 board. The reason we like this is because it has six different uh, mixes, headphone mixes out, which allows us to give the arena a different sound. Our, uh, our broadcast monitor in here allows us to have the, the full truth sound of the broadcast and then give the casters themselves um, essentially their version of a mix minus so that they hear themselves in real time and the game sound with, a, with that slight delay. Uh, all of the sound then just gets routed straight uh, through the system, uh, through individual uh, inputs uh, to our, our stream. We have streamed using a web presenter in the past. Right now, this computer is beefy enough. We like to push the stream through this machine uh, because it's, it's beefy enough. This is a, a 3080 Kingpin uh, version of, of, that, uh, of that card, and we, we like it a lot. Uh, we do have a person who will sit in this spot and manage sound at times and uh, live cameras because we have about 12 cameras. Six of them are PTZ. They're PTZ optics, either 20 or 30X. And then we have a number of other cameras set up that are, that are static. We even have a, uh, a wireless uh, Hollyland uh, HDMI uh, set up so that we can have a walkabout, fully wireless walkabout camera. But I think the most interesting thing that people would really be Im impressed with, I would think, is that our replay manages all of the social media that we create, which means students have uh, capture targets. They're putting together all the social media that we create, top fives, players of the game, player highlight packages, uh, so that they can be used in broadcast, but also so they can be exported and directly uploaded to our, our aggregators for the purpose of pushing directly out onto social media. And we, we do between 10 and 20 different pieces a week of video that we don't produce in post, we produce live for the purpose of pushing out on social media. We show them on the show, but really, they're for social media. And that's, that's what a dedicated 
uh, replay operator allows you to do. We can do replay on a single machine and, and use it meaningfully, but we can get a lot more out of it by, uh, by putting somebody smart in that position. Gosh, Tim, have I answered all the questions you can think of? Oh, uh, controller-wise. So um, we have a, a, quite a few of the X keys, different versions of the X keys. Um, we've got the uh, basically the, the replay controller, the paddle controller over there, uh, two different um, stream deck. Um, and uh, Zach, can you pull it out of the, uh, the drawer down there? We've got, we've got a uh, nuclear um, panic button that we use from time to time. We've got two of those, in fact. Um, we don't have one set up right now. But I think I think every control room needs a, you know, press in case of emergency kind of button. We use a, I think a third generation huddle cam controller. Uh, although I think we want to get the uh, the new the new Joy version of it. Oh, uh, capturing the screens um, right now just goes directly into the uh, the ATEM Constellation uh, 4ME. And uh, we have a number of other machines that can come in there. We could, if we needed to, capture every uh, machine on stage and bring it in and select from it. But since most of the games uh, operate from the observer uh, position, uh, we can have an in-game uh, you know, observer, spectator, manage the in-game cameras. And usually we have this set up. It's just one right now. But usually we have it set up in a, a two uh, observer scenario where one is the point of view camera and the other is a fly camera so we can capture all the nice moments of uh, you know from overhead and and be able to take those without bouncing back and forth uh, we have a, a an actual studio space set up in another part of the building uh, that, that we use more for a, like a interview set and things like that that connects to this room but this is primarily the control room where most of the stuff happens I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I think is kind of interesting so um, if if you look if you look here you'll see our stage in there in the arena and we've got the two teams logos on these monitors and we use the multiple outputs uh, in vmix to be able to send separate um, details to those coach will you switch it back over to the event? Uh, logo and that can all be scripted so we can decide what goes on these monitors and we'll go back to the game uh, the game look now which will show you those and we can switch back to the team look if we want to or really send anything to those screens just using vmix outputs because all those assets are in there and, and I'm excited to see what everybody else comes up with because this this works really well for us but I'm sure there'll be comments in the uh, you know on, on, on any kind of video that would say oh well have you thought about this Thank you all so much for watching this quick episode of the Rave Esports Show with me, your host, Bubba Getter. Please don't forget to donate to the VEF, the Video Games and Esports Foundation, at vef.gg. And we appreciate our sponsors, Xtron. See you next time.